M0FXB, welcome to my beginner's guide on the new Yaesu FTX-1. If you've not heard of this device before, it's basically a shack in the box that can be a 10 watt portable device and that consists of everything that you can see in my hands now and it's sort of like a, a chunky radio. Now it's got the, set of the same screen, I would say, as the Yaesu FT-710, so it's a good, it's a good four inches. Uh, screen lovely color touch screen as well they are about 1500 pounds you can buy the the sort of back end to this which which would make this a 100 watt transceiver but it's another 500 pounds so you do a couple of thousand pound thereabouts and you get the 100 watt model 50 watts on vhf possibly uhf double check that uh, to get the exact transmit powers so it's very unique because you know in one case it's portable and it's got an eight pin uh, connector for the microphone that you can just see there that comes with it and in another case it's a shack in the box um, or it's a base station so I've got my base station microphone just here that I can use with it when I configure it in that way you have got buttons on top for group mode SDX, uh, PMG, which we'll see if I just, and we will show all this closer up. Mag band grouping, filter, your band, your mode, and then you've got VFO memory, split mode, memory to VFO, and then on the front, very similar to the 710 with the sort of design of the, of the front knobs, but there's two missing. Okay, and on the rear you've got two antenna connectors. I've got an adapter on one of mine there, but you've got one for HF six meters, and then the next one down two meters seventy airband. And underneath that, you've got actually three connectors here. I've taken off the the grommet that was here, and they're labelled as extension speaker, tuner linear, and here DC input, uh, which I'll just show you that cable that I've been, I have been using. And on the, once you plug that in, you're on 10 watts and the battery just clips off, like so you just pull it towards you and it just slides like so. And then you've got the, uh, the battery and it's quite a modular device as well. So you can plug in to this, uh, your antenna tuners. There's two different types. The battery 6,000 milliamp hour it just pushes in quite nicely and it lasts, you know, it's a good eight hour. I would say that it lasts. Um, or otherwise you take this off and you clip on that back end unit we were talking about earlier, the SPA1 Optima unit. On the side you've got here the phones, headphones, underneath. Your Kia, underneath that, USB for, you know, FT8. Um, let's get it right, what's that one there? That's, G that's your DPS connector, that's a separate module. Underneath that is your USB and you can do things like FT8, WSJ, TX and then your 8 pin microphone connector. And this is the standard mic that comes with it. Programmable buttons at the front and then up and down uh, on the top there. And yes, you can plug in your HF Yaesu microphones. SD card for backup and firmware, just pokes in there. And then this little cover does just sort of clip upwards get your nail under it and then push your thumb at the top and it just peels off and i recommend you do this with your finger and then the the bu5 it was the bu6 actually because it comes with an extra cover clips over the top actually looks like this okay clips over the top now you just pop the cover back on there one nice thing about it is it, it will sit at this angle or it will sit flat. You can you can choose. It just naturally does it. And it feels, of course, very nice quality. Let's have a look at these all these different buttons and knobs. So you can choose the display. Let's press the DISP button here for display. So you can stack it above each other. Single display. And dual display, which is probably the most common that I will use. So there's dual, and then to go from left to right, you can press the sub. And when you press it, it goes, you know, you can see we're now selecting and transmitting on this half. 
press it again, receiving, transmitting on this half. When you go to this half, you use the large knob. When you go to this half, you're using the small one. And in memory mode there on top, there's a memory to, to VFO to memory mode. So you just press that and we're into VFO mode. And if we press and hold this one labeled mag, uh, hold it down and we can actually choose a different band. So we just go back to 430 megs there. And it is C4FM simultaneous receive on both sides. VHF, 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 UHF. You can mix and match in any way you like, but you'll only ever receive one HF six meters. You, you won't receive two, okay? And you can choose between the 3DS display. If we just go back to the HF band. Let's go to flick to this side. Um, we're in the 3DS now. I'll just show you how I've set mine up. See the way I'm, I'm adjusting the, the sort of waterfall gain, I call it. Hold down the function. There's your big menu. And you can cycle forward and back. And as you go forward, you'll see the RF powers there. Keep going. Channel step. But when you're in this window with all the sub menus, uh, essential sub menus, and in the display one, you can add your call sign at the top. Just there, just by tapping it. Let's go back and back. Uh, but what you'll see in this one as well, you'll, you're you're going to be able to add your tone for your. If we go to the VHF side or UHF, we can now adjust our tone frequency just by tapping, and then turning the function knob. Seventy-seven squelch type. You just tap. And as you tap, it changes, or you can turn it with the function knob. You've got all your APRS settings here as well. And yeah, extension settings, that's going to be your SD card formatting, also your firmware, all that kind of stuff. Display, operation, CW, and radio settings. So massive amount of settings. A big back button underneath to the left of the VFO, which is nice and handy. I flick to the HF side and you can see the 3DS or we can go into, I call it like, I know it's a bit of a swear word, but I call it um, icon mode, but hold down the function and let's go back, hit D level and then back out and whatever you select in that window, it puts it to the function knob look. So we've now got D level here and I can bring that scope up a bit. If I'm in 3DS mode, it, again, it works quite well on in that as well. Sorry about my fingers. If we hit multi, you've got your oscilloscope. The other one is look at your scope. You've got it's showing main here. But if I tap it, we now switch to the scope that we would be viewing for the UHF side. So we can s switch there, and then we've got the span. How wide we're viewing. So if we go to a thousand, it can change it completely. We can bring down the scope a bit on that, and then we can change the speed. And yes, there is averaging on this. If you press and hold the function, and a lot of people want averaging, go to display, then go to scope, and you'll see averaging there. And it does work. Yeah, I've tested it, and it, it does work. It's worth. It is worth having. Then regarding the, when you're scrolling, look, we're in HF now, you can press fix, center. So that was center, where it just keeps what you're viewing here, this frequency in the center. Cursor, that's the one I like. Just, I can just tune through, just back out there a minute. Find the activity, and it's, it's, it's a few around. I like a span of about 200. Very nice front facing speaker. And of course, DNR mode. DNF, DNR, noise blanker, but also you've got shift, width, notch, contour. So, and quick memory here QMB got that in to, to, to put a channel into memory it's really easy hold down the VM 
you this list appears scroll down till you find a space press it again you've got it into the memory now this little this is actually a keypad it's not corresponding to everything next to it so if you want to name that one there you tap name and then i'm just going to put the word 40 for now but look letters and numbers yeah and then you can delete, you can change the frequency, the mode, split memory, me choose a memory group and all that. So it's really easy to add memory channels. One of the, one of the easiest I've used, but mind you, Icom, once you know how, Icom can be quite, using that adapter I've got is a bit rubbish. So you can see that the function knob is a knob you're going to be using a lot. Pretty much selecting from a big grid Four, three pages, I think, is it? Yeah, three pages. And then anything you select, you can then adjust here. You can actually adjust some things using the touch screen as well. You've got, see the tune here? You've got fine and fast just under here. So that's, it says fine at the top. You can see GPS has been turned on. You can turn on the Bluetooth. You can pair it to your SSM BT 10 and 20, is it? Uh, it works fine, and that is audio and data. Uh, so that's worth... T I will be testing that, uh, the data side of it. That's pretty much everything we're seeing here. Regarding the volume and squelch, so it's this, let's go to the A, the sort of main, the, the, the sub-band, really. We're going to press this button, and look, you see squelch, press again, volume, press again, squelch and volume. But when you're on HF, if you go to this side, exactly the same here, but you get RF gain now because you're in HF bands. Uh, from an air band point of view, it works great. And to type a frequency when you're in VFO mode, just tap it. One, three, three dot eight five zero enter that's my air band it's quite busy for me normally and it has an auto selected am but you can tap the screen i think it will when they do the firmware but look am so one three three eight fifty am and if you want to see all the different modes it does let's just turn up the volume there different modes look at that <laughs> rtty psk you can hear the AM coming through now. And we can view that on a single screen if you want. Hopefully. Go to the single and then hit the AB. Do that again. There you go. Electricity 2 4. Did this stand by? Electricity 9 9. You can use that. Flick over to that scope. 9 9 I'm getting some interference there, aren't I? But you can see the air band's working great. And and it will work in, you know, dual. You can have air band and HF at the same time. So electricity 9 9, I thought you were giving way to 2 4. That's you on hotel, is it? Nine, nine, Roger, and uh, fire. Just hold position, Atlantic traffic at two and a half. Okay, well, let's um, let's choose uh, memory mode. You won't be in a field with well, 1200 or whatever the area I And you when you've got the SPA1 with the antenna tuner at the back end, the 100 watt unit, you have two speakers um, and you actually have two, so, uh, two yeah. HF antenna yeah. connectors and, and, and then the VHF. UHF, so it really opens it up, and it's well worth the money they're charging for that. If you look here, clarifier, press it once, it says clarifier receive, TX, RX and TX, and if we go to the B band, exactly the same. It is showing like split mode here as well, if we just briefly press it, it's, it's swapping, watch this. And then when it's on this side, I'm guessing, yeah, we're going to, we're in memory mode, so look, it's changing the memory channels. You can go VFO, so you're sort of switching them. Or you can hold, you've got split mode, maybe that's going to work well for um, the, the satellite mode, but I have to 
check that one out and see if that will work. Of course, it'll get all the frequencies that you need for a satellite. It, we've got an X button here, and at the moment, if we just press it briefly, we go into group mode for C4FM, and if you're in, if you've got your hotspot or your repeater, they all start to appear here. Same goes for the the actual um, the APRS. You've got a whole new window for APRS. Another quite neat feature is the sort of memory scan. So if you're on this side here, let's see if it does it now. And press and hold our finger on the scope. Just check. Yeah, watch this. It's called a memory scan. Hold your finger on the scope. And then it starts to show. Uh, so it's a bit like PMG mode, but it's, it's more of a scope. Put you into single mode. You see in the or hit the PMG and then you get the PMG. PMG is really easy to add things when you're in VFO. You choose a frequency, hold down the PMG, and it just adds it to the list. To remove one, you just scroll to it and hold your finger on the same button. It removes it. I think it's pretty good. PMG mode. SDX. Improves the received sensitivity. Picks out those weaker stations. And I'm finding that's turning on with all modes. GPS hasn't quite got a lot because we haven't got a GPS. Um, it just plugs into the, right, the left hand side here. So there's a... There's an equaliser for your microphone and for your audio that you're listening to as well. We'll just quickly look at some of these menu listings. D-level that we're using now, D-peak, D-marker, the colours. You can choose all these colours for the 3DS and the normal display. Go back. Contrast, brightness, mocks, amplifier, AGC, mic equaliser, proke. Uh, noise blanker DNR TXW. There's my RF power mic gain, so I'm going to go on forever, can't we? A raft of CW selections, and look, you can record and play, which I'm going to have a go at that in one of my new videos soon. And then look, you can select DCS, it's got DG, the DG, or, uh, what do they call it? DGID, DGID. There it is, there. On its default settings, channel step. So I think that's about it. I mean, there's, you know, I'm always going to forget something, but generally, it's a feature-packed device. The the work that has gone into this set, just to write the firmware, must have been incredible, and then to build it and get everything into this small unit. And it's a nice size, you know. It's a nice size. I never, I've not once thought. It could be this, it could be that. I've always thought, perfect. It's got that connector at the bottom as well for your tripod, just underneath, and that as well. So it's very flexible regarding how you're going to mount it, or you might decide to, you know, buy the SPA1, the Optima version, and you get the back end, which you can unclip with about three, four cables. There isn't an extension kit yet, but I'm sure one will get made, because I think there's a demand for it or ham, a ham radio operator will just make one. Um, and then you've got the accessory of a fan that clips onto the back as well, for keeping it cool when it's, get, when it's a bit too busy with things like FTA as well, and so on and so on. A new firmware due soon, I would say. The LEDs change color when you're doing different things as well, just here. Thanks for watching my channel. Please hit the like and subscribe, 7-3, all the best.